Hi, welcome to Ant Lab Games. I'm your host, Anthony. And I'm Francis. And today we're going to talk about a game called Deadly, Deadly Dowagers. <laughs> so, Deadly Dowagers is a card game for two to six players published by Tabletop Tycoons, where players are going to take the roles of a middle class Victorian woman seeking to become a duchess. Yes. Right? That's as, as <laughs> the simple goal as of, it boils uh, down. Of most Victorian women yes. of the era, I suppose, uh, right? Clearly, clearly it is. <laughs> uh, but because the name Deadly Dowagers, obviously there's something a little bit nefarious going on. Yes. Right? So why don't you tell us how we win the game? Excellent. So this uh, win condition is very easy. So as Anthony said, the uh, the women want to become a duchess. That means you have to marry the duke. Yeah, that's the duke the of Lansdale. There's only one of them. Yep. Um, but in order to marry the duke, you will require a pretty hefty dowry that you currently do not have. I think we start the game with about five crowns, yep. and he requires 120. Um, it also uh, requires us to keep our infamy pretty low, so we can't be, um, you know, we have to be re well respected mm -hmm. in the community and also have that dowry, it's most important. So first person to meet those conditions and play a remarry card mm. to marry the Duke wins the game. Yep. So. We'll start off with telling you how the game uh, sets up. Yeah, yeah. How we actually play, yeah. and then we'll talk about our experience with the yes. game. Yes. So if you look at the table, here is the simple setup for Deadly Dowagers. Um, every player, two to six players, uh, will take a player board. They're not asymmetrical. They're just different characters with different backstories, flavor. really. Yeah. Just a little bit of flavor in there. But, but otherwise, they're all the same. Um, so everybody takes a player board, they take an infamy tracker, and they also take one of these little um, upgrade markers, and we'll talk about that in a second. Every player starts with five crowns, which is the currency in this game, uh, and two randomly dealt farmlands. Mm -hmm. You also get five cards from the main draw deck, um, and you set up the supply of eligible bachelors. Oh, so <laughs> uh, as you can see, there's quite an array, including the Duke, but on the top you've got working class husbands who are not noble, um, and every player will choose one of those three categories, and they go up um, in cost, but they all have different strengths, right, mm -hmm. and, and abilities, and to, based on what the text says. Um, before you are able to afford one of the nobility, right? Yes. So working up into the nobility to ultimately find your way into the heart of the Duke, right? <laughs> so, uh, like I said, every player is going to start by taking their uh, starter, working class husband, into their tableau, paying the cost and gaining whatever infamy. So, for example, if you look at the Farmer Harold, Farmer Harold, <laughs> uh, he has a cost of zero crowns, but he is also going to gain you three infamy because you know he's a farmer. Uh, but he does have an ability, which you'll see like during the investment phase, you'll discard a farmland card from your hand to gain three crowns. So he gives you a special ability there. And during the accounts, settling, settling account, of accounts, yeah. he's going to be worth fifteen crowns. We'll explain what, what settling of the accounts <laughs> means because that is a very powerful phase in the game that you will activate while you play. Right. So that literally is the setup. Mm -hmm. Can um, talk about mechanics? And let's talk yeah. about uh, mechanics and then sort of turn structure. Yeah, absolutely. So um, really at its heart, this is a, I want to say a tableau builder. It's really mm -hmm. like a tableau management game because yeah. you're going to end up through the course of the game building up a little tableau that you're going to score mm -hmm. and then discard some of that tableau, build it up again for the next kind of scoring, which is at your leisure whenever yeah. you decide to marry and get rid of husbands. And you're going to do that in order to gain that currency. And once you have enough, you're going to end up hopefully marrying the Duke. At so some point, yes. yes. So to explain kind of how this works, let's go through the turn structure okay. real quick. So again, when you first set up the game, um, you're going to do a draft. So as Anthony said, we start with five cards yep. and you're going to choose one of those cards to keep and you're going to pass the rest to uh, the next player. Right. So each player will yep. take one and then pass the rest. Do your usual draft. And you're going to do this four times. Yep. So we'll just do a quick one here. Right. Oops, there we go. Uh, we're going to do this four times. So one card ultimately will get discarded. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, we'll do that. the last there card gets go. discarded. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. So now you're left with a hand of uh, four cards. Then you have your investment phase. So the investment phase is really where you're going to be playing cards into your tableau. And you're going to invest in various lands, charities, um, extramarital relations, and other business ventures. So this just kind of represents what you're doing while you're married to this husband mm -hmm. and you're, you know, kind of using his influence, what he has in order to maximize what you're playing into your tableau. So as Anthony was mentioning, a lot of the husbands give you the ability to play certain cards for free or during the investment phase, discarding certain kinds of land for extra money. So you'll be using those abilities as you're playing. So we have a couple of different kinds of cards that you can use during this phase. So I can go over those uh, very quickly here. Um, you have uh, these lands. So you, when you start the game with your starter husbands, your working class husbands, you can only have four types of, or four land cards in your tableau. So we have farmlands to start. Uh, I don't have any here, but mm -hmm. you can show um, we have estates. So when you play these cards into your tableau, you'll pay the cost, if any, uh, the estate, for example, would cost five crowns, but it also has an effect. So immediately reducing your infamy, which we'll go over in a minute by five, uh, placing that in your tableau. You also have these um, these cards that have like a little timer on them. Yeah, they're called ventures. Ventures. So you have like rent. So maybe you've picked up a, a border, right, to put in your estate or on your farm. And what this is going to do is pay you additional crowns when you settle your husband's estate. So you can play, uh, you can play cards like that. And this phase is is played no matter you're playing two players or six players. Everybody is doing this at the same time, mm -hmm. which is one thing I really enjoy yep. in games when you can do all that at the same time. Yeah, as long as you can afford yes. it and you choose to play it. Yep. You can put it in your tableau. So you have five cards. You're going to play them all if you can into your tableau. Exactly. But you'll hold on to a few that you may not want to play just right. yet. You may want to play at a separate time yep. at a later time. So. Um, and basically what you're going to have here, like I said, are the rent cards as your ventures. Um, we also have these shipping cards if you mm -hmm. want to zoom in on that. And what these are really just a very basic set collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a whole bunch here too. So you'll just collect these shipping cards and kind of stack them on top of each other. And then when you settle your husband's accounts, you'll count the number of shipping cards you have, and that's how many crowns that you get. Right. So um, you'll want to be careful not to only have one because that'll actually lose mm -hmm. you two crowns. But you, a good thing to, to keep in mind is that mm -hmm. you control the action that will force you to settle your accounts. Exactly, so right. So you have time to sort of stash mm -hmm. things and build up your tableau because you're, you're essentially having your husband do a lot of work yes. to build up your, <laughs> your uh, estate, really, your right, whole estate, right. uh, before you decide to off him. Yes, yes. Um, because obviously it's called Deadly Dowagers because you are going to get to the into the Duke's heart <laughs> by marrying and killing off your husbands. Right, for money. For money. As mo you're going to have them build up some wealth. <laughs> They're going to be worth you know this intrinsic wealth value when you first get them. But you're yeah. going to, as you off them, you're going to gain that wealth plus your the assets they've been able to accrue right. over the period while you were married. Represented by your tableau. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Th this is why they call it the settling of accounts, right? Because you're, right. you're having your husband do a bunch of business ventures, renting out some land, renting yeah. out estates. Um, and then once he's dead, <laughs> you're basically collecting on all those rents and, and, right. and capitalizing on everything he's built for you yes. to build enough of a dowry to go find a, a better man. <laughs> yes. So actually, let's talk about that. So that's yes. the next phase, right? So after yep. everyone is done investing, then you move on to uh, the deal with your husband phase yes. of the game. <laughs> it's time so, to deal with him. <laughs> so I have to deal with your husband. So there's a couple things you can do with your husband, actually. So first, you can play a We'll just call it a murder card, yeah. right? So we're gonna off him. Well, in this case, oh, actually, this is a natural that's, causes, that's one of the which best is great in the game. because no infamy, mm -hmm. right? He just silently yeah, he just passed, passes, and you get <laughs> has, to take his. Has uh, he passed? Fetch my veils and my lawyer. And my lawyer, we need to go collect <laughs> so, his estate. So anyway, or the other thing that you can do is if you have one of these, let's say you've. Uh, I always I like to start with these like curates sometimes. You can't. They start at the curate level, so they're going to be worth five crowns if yeah, they're. Yeah, these are your dead. upgradable husbands. Right. This is the only. <laughs> they're the working. Yes. The two working class husbands uh, in the te in the offer mm -hmm. have three different levels of upgrades where right. they become actual better. You, you kind of push so them into like a better any profession. Good wife, you mm -hmm. try to build up your husband, mm -hmm. right, to be a better man. <laughs> yes, a better <laughs> and provider. And in this case, um, you know, you could build you could build your husband up as much as you want to in order to cash out at his best, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Yeah. 
Um, so that's that. Those are the two main things that you can do, and those are both cards. Um, so you could. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm actually. I jumped ahead you of jumped myself. Way ahead, I did. Yeah. I jumped way way ahead of myself, but that's okay. Um, so there's two cards that you can play. Like I said, you've got the one with the little knife or the sword on it. That's like the murder yep. your husband. And then there's the other the, one. Yeah, I'll go get grab you one that. Right now. It's a remarry card. Yep. So if you do not currently have a husband, because maybe he was offed in the last round of the game mm -hmm. you can play a remarry card right. and that allows you to choose a husband card and pay the dowry to the bank you would then just um, pay attention to the infamy levels here so your working class husbands will gain you infamy if you select a noble husband they just have a max uh, requirement for the infamy so you don't want to go above a certain infamy level in order to uh, to marry those husbands so those are the two main things that you can do and then in addition to that you can promote a husband and you can um, if you don't have one of these cards to kill off a husband and you really want to kill him off mm -hmm. you can strangle him mm, mm. for seven infamy yeah. um, which is a choice mm -hmm. um, <laughs> or uh, if you also if you don't have a husband and you don't have a card to remarry a new husband you can elope with a husband yes. the difference when you elope you're gonna gain f you do the same thing you pay the dowry right. you pay you but you're gonna gain five infamy because mm -hmm. you shouldn't do that. yeah right? so if you so. look at uh, you look here so as Lake said you can promote by paying crowns that's how you get your, your yes. upgradable husbands yep. better uh, strangle your husband, you're going to get seven infamy. I'll keep and him if you elope second, with a new husband, you'll gain five. So you don't, you don't always have to have the card to right. to off your husband mm -hmm. or to remarry your husband. Right. The one exception is the duke. You have yes. to have the card. Yeah, you for the can't duke. elope with the duke. Yep, he he knows it, better. It says it right <laughs> on his card. You right. must have yes. the remarry card. Uh, and as you get towards the end of the game, it makes a lot more sense to strategically because you may be at a point where mm -hmm. you can elope with the Duke, but you have to wait to get one of those remarried cards. Yes. So, okay. So back down to the husbands. Um, so husband has passed. What you're going to do is actually flip his card over and he has a nice little gravestone or mausoleum and he's going to go in your graveyard. Yep. So, uh, um, And you're going to accrue this graveyard <laughs> yeah so you've got like the a graveyard course of the of game husbands. because you're going to be marrying all and kinds of husbands and offing yeah. them and then getting more and what yes sorry i interrupted you no but that's okay <laughs> um so this is so we've spoken up to the point where the husband dies right so you've you've taken the action to off your husband mm -hmm. now you can only do that if you have a husband so either you have to marry a husband mm -hmm. or you don't have to do anything. But I will say you can marry a new husband and then also kill him in the same in the phase. same phase. I mean, you have to strangle him. But well, yeah. you you would have to strangle him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's that's a tough one to swallow if you're if you're trying to f attract another yeah. husband uh, who has a maximum infamy requirement because you've got to manage that infamy. It's right. not that easy to, to reduce. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure that you're. You know, you're doing it at the right time. Yes. And again, you want to you want to manage that. So, um, the last phase mm -hmm. here is um, so after you've done your whether you decided to marry or kill a husband. Yeah. Um, once he dies, we have to resolve. Yes. The uh, settling yes, of accounts, yes. and that's that's this is where the the crux of the scoring comes in. Yeah. So I've set up like a little um, sort of suppose this is your tableau, right? Yeah, so, um, we, so we've we got some things going on. I think there's a card. There's a card or two we, we haven't seen in here. There's a mill card that lets you do some additional scoring. But right. you you know how tableau builders work. It's very similar to getting points on all kinds of other tableau mm -hmm. builders. So you're just going to look at these settling accounts and gain that number of crowns in addition to whatever your husband was worth when you killed him. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I would get two, four, eight for my rent for my farmland. Uh, 9, 10, 11, oh, yeah, 12. Would this would be like under here, here, right? Yeah. Like that. If you can see. Boop, yeah, like that. There you go. Yeah. And then I'd count the shipping cards. I have three shipping cards. That would give me three additional crowns. Um, so what did I say? We're at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus the 55. Right. That's 70 yeah. crowns. So right. 70 crowns. And if you were at, if you were above mm -hmm. 9, so if you're at 10 infamy or higher, mm -hmm. you actually uh, lose five crowns off right. the top automatic. Yep. So then you would, but since you're not, you're at zero. Yeah. 
you're going to get uh, the full yep. 70 crowns. Now, how are you accruing infamy? Because we haven't really covered that. Um, I want to see if there's a, like, uh, we'll do inheritance powder, for example, right? Yeah. Now, depending on the weapon that you use or how your husband dies, you'll gain more or less or less infamy. Mm -hmm. Inheritance powder only um, gains you one infamy, but there's like an ax, I think that gets four infamy. So mm -hmm. you wanna be careful about like how you're doing it. And then also you will gain infamy one per husband that you already have in your graveyard. Right. And it reminds you on the top oh, of, the, it does. of the tombstone, yes. it actually has the gain one infamy during mm -hmm. the, and you see that little uh, ink and feather. That yep. means during the settling of accounts, uh, you're gonna gain one infamy per gravestone in your grave at the time that you killed your husband right, right? so you're going to get uh infamy if, if you use the, the like a knife you're going to get whatever the infamy is on that knife plus uh whatever infamy you have for how many previous husbands mm -hmm. have passed already and yeah. then you and you basically just collect everything else yep. so you're really just getting a lot of money at that's that point. it yeah and then all of your ventures go away your mm -hmm. land will stay out and and then that's it then you start preparing for your next husband right so another card we didn't one thing we didn't talk about are these lightning bolt cards. You know, in, in these games, any lightning bolt is an instant play. So when you play this card, you automatically play it uh, during the um, the investment phase because you see all the symbols there. But this would just gain two crowns. You give two crowns to another player, and you could reduce your infamy by two. So it's like you're donating to charity, and you're reducing your infamy. So this is one way to get rid of infamy. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you build an estate, and every time you build an estate, you gain five. Uh, you get to reduce your infamy by five. So um, there's there's a number of ways to manage your infamy mm -hmm. that aren't overly difficult. Uh, you're allowed once you marry your first noble, you're allowed to have five land tiles instead of four. Yep. Uh, of properties out there, and um, a good way to kind of get um, your infamy down is to replace like a piece of farmland, for example. If you say you've got the full max five, you can replace your land with a different, a new one, mm -hmm. and that will you know bump your infamy down. So it's yeah. just a different way to do it. So there's yep. strategies on how to hand, how to manage that. Yes. Um, and I think the only other card we didn't see was like the mill card, which just gives you, you'll see there's like little symbols on the bottoms of yeah. your cards. It'll give you some points for like how many symbols you have or bonuses based on what symbols you have. So, um, but that's pretty much it. So again, yeah. end game, first one to get 120 crowns or more and pay that dowry to the Duke while having infamy below nine, nine or, or below. Less, yeah. um, wins game. That's Becomes it. the Duchess. Imme immediately. So as soon as you can pull that off, boom, you win. Yes. Um, it takes... It takes about four or five husbands to get to that point. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, to get enough money to do that. Yeah. And, and while you're trying to manage your Which is tough because as you're killing more husbands, you're gaining that much more infamy. You are. So you really so, have to manage it. At a certain point, you got to pull yeah. the trigger if you, if yeah. you can. So, uh, that's <laughs> no it. No pun intended. No pun intended. So, uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little yes. bit about our experience with this. Okay. What did you think? Okay. So this was funny. So we... Uh, we've obviously, obviously worked with Tabletop Tycoon in the past. We've covered Everdell, um, My Little Everdell, all that kind of thing. So when uh, we were contacted to play this game, it was very different from like the normal fair, I mm -hmm. guess. And the the topic, obviously, very macabre, very dark. Um, but what the heck, I love tableau builders. So I was like, yes, let's play. And so, um, so we got it in, obviously played it. And I will say I was... I was really, really surprised by how much fun this game is. Again, because I think I was a little bit like, I'm I'm okay with macabre themes. Mm -hmm. I'm not like not okay with them, but it's a little, it's very, very dark. So, oh, yeah. but I loved the idea of it being like Victorian England and all of that. So when, when the game arrived, we got to see the components and the art is beautiful. It kind of reminded me a lot of Obsession, but not gameplay style, just in Theme, that world, yeah. because you can see these kinds of things happening. Mm -hmm. And it also reminded me of other games I like, where like uh, it was like the Testament of Duke de Crazy, right? Where mm -hmm. you're trying to marry people together. A legacy. You're not a legacy of Duke yeah. de Crazy, so you're not trying to like off people necessarily, but you are trying to inject yourselves in their lives to try and gain status in a family, mm -hmm. and that's always a fun kind of theme for me because it's so old old school right so right. No, that's um, cool. but yeah anyway i was uh i was really pleasantly surprised with it um mm. i'm more interested in your thoughts oh, because really? this is honestly a review i thought i was going to be doing by myself oh okay um, so, but here you are here i am so. <laughs> suckered in uh well it, had, it plays minimum too so there was no way you were well the i was i was uh, playing by no myself. but all jokes aside <laughs> um i i was interested in this game mainly because the themes seem kind of different and I wasn't really sure what to expect mechanically. Um, 
you read the rules, you told me it was it was definitely an easier, lighter, faster playing game. So I was like, oh, okay, I, I, that that's cool. Um, once we got it set up on the table, read the rules, played it, um, I my I, I was uh, I I'm a sucker for it. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, what do I like about this game? Um, dark theme aside, it, I, I just it's a really dark theme, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of dark theme games yeah, out there. Yeah, there is. Um, so they don't turn me off. Mm -hmm. I think they're actually, if done well, this is kind of tongue in cheek. It is. So yeah. it's not like over the right. top. So I can man it. That's fine with it. I'm totally fine with the theme. Um, and I just didn't know how they would sort of incorporate that into the mechanic. Right. Uh, but I found it was done very well. Uh, what I do like is right out of the gate, you start with a husband. You start plotting his death <laughs> and you <laughs> start working towards building his estate to get more money to do it again and it's actually yeah. it's really creative and you really start to enjoy setting up these almost like little scenarios and yeah and i and the, you get like oh okay the natural causes you don't really feel so bad there's no infamy cost to it you're like boom you drop that on him you're like all right i'm ready to go right for the next one uh, let's strike this again. <laughs> and as you start to accrue a lot of crowns, you get really excited because you're like, I'm getting much closer to being able to get the Duke. Um, so it, it really has that sort of a really good flow. The tableau building is nice because you don't get too invested in your tableau because once you off your husband, you settle the accounts, you're wiping it and you're going right back um, and you're cleaning it up again. So I think it's, I love the pace of that. The game plays quick enough that at the end of it, I'm like, okay. I don't, I'm like not going, wow, I'm glad that game is over. Like, cause there's a lot of times when we play these long drawn out games, I'm like, man, I went about three rounds too long. Yeah. Uh, we've run into a lot of that lately where the mm -hmm. pacing just isn't there. The pacing on this was perfect. Like yeah. as soon as we got to that point, I'm like, I'm ready. Yeah. And I was still into the game and then we, we ended it and it was like, you know what? This felt really good. I would play this again. Like, and I, and if I, I think that's a sure sign of a successful design when you can have all of these things that feel rewarding that you're doing and still at the end of it not feel like it, it overstayed its welcome and this one definitely and it's a, it, like you said it's a beautiful game to look at yeah it's not punishing there's no take that that hurts each other mm -hmm. um it's just done so well yeah so yeah i really really like this one yeah i was surprised so i'm mean, like i think i was more so i mean i wasn't surprised that you liked it like after we played it and i'm like the mechanics I mean, are the mechanics are really really tight they're like you said it flows beautifully mm -hmm. one of the things that i really really liked about this is that there is a lot of um what do you call that everybody's playing at the same time um everybody's cool. playing everybody's at the same playing time, at the same time. <laughs> so, um your investment phase like everybody's kind of taking care of their stuff at the same time mm -hmm. which thematically felt very much like your women in this community you're all marrying your people mm -hmm. you're settling you're doing your stuff and then you're dealing with your husband, yeah. you know, um, yeah, the one by one or whatever. The, is, yeah, really, simultaneous is the word is I was that, looking that for. Word? That's the one. So you're really doing all this at the same time. And it felt a little bit like a race yeah. because towards the end, and it is very balanced, towards the end, you are both or all going for the Duke mm -hmm. at the same time time probably around more the or same less. time yeah uh i know well. yeah we're we get to the point where we're at the end and my <laughs> the last time we played my infamy was at 10 yeah and you you became the duchess yeah. you were because you she's like i got i, I got was the like money. i got the remarry I'm card there it is i'm gonna marry him and i'm like and he's like no you're not no, you're not and you're like why not i'm like because you need nine or less infamy and you're at 10 you're like yeah. no. no and then i was like yeah I'm going to actually. Yes, exactly. Marry so now you can both is, marry the Duke at the same time. Yeah, there's some tiebreaker stuff. But then there's tiebreaker. So yeah. they, they, they tell you about that. In the right. Rules. But yeah, this is definitely one. And there haven't been many recently mm -hmm. that is it plays quickly enough and it, the pace is comfortable enough that I want to play this right after we're done playing it. Yeah. I want to play it again. Yeah. And definitely one that we'll bring out to play with more people. I love that it plays up to six. Mm -hmm. Again, simultaneous play. Yeah. With two people, uh, It's we did, probably didn't feel the effect of this very much, but you do have the draft rotation. Mm. Um, so Switches. if you're playing with more people, the direction of the draft mm. changes so that you're not always getting stuck with like somebody else's crappy cards yeah, yeah. that they so keep you giving you. So that's kind of nice. And I felt like there was enough variety in the cards 
that it was exciting, but not too much that you're sitting there waiting for a card to come out. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's a fast playing game. So if you need a mill or you need the charity or something, you know what to expect in the deck and you can usually get it. But there's 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 a challenge in drafting those cards mm -hmm. and passing them around to really keep the ones that you know you're going to need, keep the weapons that you you yeah, think you might need. Hold on to the weapon. You do get to hold on to three cards from round to round, mm -hmm. so you don't have to play everything if you don't want to. But there's just a lot of good decisions in a package that is easy to play, pretty to look at, unique theme that is beautifully implemented. Yeah. Yeah. This is a this was definitely a surprise for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, as a husband, you know, and you're playing a game where your sole objective is yes. to kill your husband. Right. Uh, it doesn't really sit well. Uh, yeah. But honestly, it's it's a it's it's a it's a different theme. That's ref yeah. I like. I find it refreshing to see themes that aren't samey. You know, yeah. just another fantasy game, another space game. Right. Uh, the Victorian games, like they're actually pretty hot when they come yeah. out. Like they've been, you know, really hit. Yeah, uh, with us, you know, we really enjoy that theme, that that era, and right. uh, I'd like to see more of it. Well, I just say, I feel like we have friends. Like I know we have friends uh, on the top of my head that yeah. would love to play this. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah. it just hits that like it's that light midweight sort of like accessible. Anybody mm -hmm. can play it, and then the box but is also, really small too. Like you can kind of have fun in this little mm -hmm. Victorian story. Oh yeah, you know of like. Offing your husband in the same way that we get into the theme of like obsession and it's like I'm building my estate and mm -hmm. like all this stuff. So yeah, 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 it's for sure. Just really cool. So, I was so so pleasantly surprised with this one. Yeah, it is a it is an absolute winner for us. Yeah. Um, how would you rate this? Let's go to the ratings. Oh first, my so. goodness! You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna surprise you. Mm. I I would rate this a green. <gasps> Whoa! You're I going would right to it, huh? Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, this is uh, one I I don't want to ever you see hold this on leave. to this. this I would this hold is, on to this This is a one. permanent part of our collection. Yeah, um, absolutely. Only, and I'll tell you why, mm -hmm. particularly because of the accessibility, mm -hmm. the unique theme mm -hmm. that I'm not bored by, and it plays quickly and is is a good pace. The one thing I find key about the enjoyability of mm -hmm. the Tableau Building, right? we enjoy Tableau Builders, but there's yeah. a certain point in Tableau Builders where they become unwieldy to score. Yes. You've got like... I, I do. remember this yeah. guy doubles yep. the points for this guy here who gets points for that guy here. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, right. how am I? I need an abacus. I need all these things to track <laughs> all my points. Where this game, there are limits to how much you can put in your tableau mm -hmm. because you can't just keep building it because you yeah, only can have like five properties. Too. Absolutely. And yeah. you have to at some point off your husband, which clears your tableau of everything mm -hmm. except for the land. Right. So you're refreshing it enough that when you do your scorings, they're not taking you 20 minutes to sit there yeah. and figure out like, Oof. it's not like an end, end game scoring. You score exactly. so many times throughout the game that it's in smaller bites. And I really appreciate that because there are so many fiddly tableau builders mm -hmm. when it comes to scoring that yeah. I'm just like, I just I lose interest in those because it's just it's too much. Right. Well, or you think you end up with like all the cards like yeah, underneath just, of the and you bump the table and it's like yeah, everything it's just, goes it's everywhere. It's like you lose track of yeah. what you're doing. So I mean, not, not that they're not enjoyable. Right. Right. It's just that for something of this weight mm -hmm. and accessibility, yeah. like it's it's the perfect balance. Yeah. So, it was a really good balance, really good blend. Yeah. I'd give it a easy. I'd give it a low green okay. as well. Yep. Like this is just on the on the bottom of my. Um, keep like if i had my 100 games like yep. would, this would go in there for me but it would be like somewhere between like yeah. if i had to bump a green game this yeah. might be one that gets bumped yeah uh down one but but still but that it doesn't does, mean it's not good doesn't mean it's not yeah. good like at all so this is this is definitely a really good game yeah cool you know. all right well we hope you enjoyed our little <laughs> our review. deadly dowagers yeah, so yes. our deadly dowagers uh we really enjoy this one uh, we hope you did as well. So let us know in the comments below if it's something that you think would fit in your collection. Yes. Is this something you would play? Yeah. Is it something you're interested in? Absolutely. So if you enjoy these types of videos, you want to support the channel, please go find us on Ant Lab Games on Patreon. Join our Discord. Links are down below. Uh, love to have you as part of the community. Yeah. And uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you next time. All right. We'll see you.